Normally, I only review fully electric cars. This car though is not a fully electric car. So, why did I bother to make a video about it? Keep watching to find out. Hello there monsters and men, ladies and people. This is a Lincoln Co. 01 and welcome to Recharging. Lincoln Co. you said? Never heard of it, sounds more like a pop group to me. Well, maybe there is a pop group called Lincoln Co. But I am talking about the automobile brand owned by Geely. Yes, the same company that owns Geely cars, but also Volvo. So what is so special about Lincoln Co then? Well, they want to make mobility easy. They do not want you to own a car, but they want you to share a car with others. And that is the whole reason I make a video about Lincoln Co. Because if you share your car with others, those others do not have to buy a car, which is better for the environment. Keep in mind, it is not mandatory to share your car with others. If you want to keep it all by yourself, that is fine too. But that is not the intention of Lincoln Co. So how does it all work? Well, of course, step one is getting a Lincoln Co. 01. And there are actually two ways to do that. You can buy the car, here in the Netherlands, it will cost you 39,000 euros. And that is actually a very competitive price for what you get. Or two, for 500 euros a month, you can get a subscription on the car. Included in the subscription are taxes, insurance, maintenance, and also 1,250 kilometers. If you drive more than those 1,250 kilometers, it will cost you 15 cents per extra kilometer. But if you drive less than 1,250 kilometers a month, the remaining kilometers will transfer to the next month. Of course, being a new and fancy automobile brand, you can only buy the Lincoln Co. 01 online. But if you want to see it in real life, you can go to the so-called Lincoln Co. Clubs. Step two is to register yourself on the Lincoln Co. platform. Lincoln Co. tries to create a whole community behind their brand. A way that they want to enhance this community feeling is to, for example, host special events for members only in their clubs. And step number three is actually start sharing your car. What I have here are two mobile phones provided by Lincoln Co. The reason for this is that, well, the sharing platform is not out yet. So Lincoln Co provided me with these two phones with a test version of the app. One phone is set up as a car owner, the lender, and the other phone is set up as a borrower. So I own a Lincoln Co and I want to share my car. What I do is I open the app on my mobile phone. I go to the main menu and here I see three menu items. You have my car where you can control different features of your car or see the status or where it is parked for example. You have borrow. Yes, as a Lincoln Co owner you can still borrow other Lincoln Co's but the most important one for now is the share item. If I press on share, I can go to settings first because in my settings, I can determine how much someone should pay when they borrow the car. I can determine this by hour and by day. And if I have done that, I can set the location where someone should pick up and return the car. If I've done that, I can set the time frame. So let's say, for example, I don't need my car for another three and a half hours. I say that the car is, avail is available from now on until five o'clock. And then I can press start sharing and then my car is visible on the Lincoln Co sharing network and I have to wait for a borrower. Okay, here I am being someone who registered themselves on the Lincoln Co platform because I wanna borrow a Lincoln Co. I also open the app on my mobile phone and in the main menu, of course, I press borrow. After I've done that, I set the time frame where I want to use the car in, and then I set the location where I want to pick up a car. After you've done that, you see on a map all available Lincoln Co's. You can see how much kilometers they have driven, but more importantly, you can also see the price. If I see a Lincoln Co that I fancy, I press the Lincoln Co and I send a booking request to the lender, and then I wait for my booking request to be accepted or maybe declined. So your bookings request got accepted. Yes. Then you can go to the location where the car is parked. 
Whenever you arrive there, the first thing that you do is take photos of the whole car. The reason for that, then you, the borrower, but also the lender, has proof of the state that the car is in before you started using it. So you're ready to go, you've taken all your photos, then you unlock the car with the app, you start it and then you drive away. Whenever you are done with the car, you return it to the same location as where you picked it up. You take photos again because then you have proof that you did not cause any damage or maybe did cause some damage. And then, well, you lock the car, you end the booking and that's it. Well, almost that's it because then you, the borrower, has to give a review to the lender and vice versa. Because next time when you want to borrow a car or someone wants to lend a car from that person, those persons have a bit of a better view with what kind of person they are dealing with. But what kind of car do you get when you order a Lincoln Co. 01? Well, you get this one, nothing more and nothing less. And that is because there's only one version available. The only thing that you can choose is the color. Do you want a black one like this or a blue one? And if you want a tow hook or not. This is great for Lincoln Co though, because this makes assembling the car easier, which means cheaper, which means they can ask a lower price. But it is also part of their philosophy to make mobility easier, because if you have seen a Lincoln Co and you want to order one, you know exactly what car you are getting. You get a drivetrain with 261 horsepower and 425 newton meters of torque. With that, the car can do 0 to 100 in about 7.9 seconds and the car has a top speed of 210 kilometers an hour. Yes indeed, this car does have a plug and that is because it is a plug-in hybrid. It has a 17 kilowatt hour battery pack and 14 kilowatt hours is usable. The claimed electric range is 69 kilometers and my experience so far, if you drive on mixed roads, that is doable. Charging the car from 0 to 100% will take you about 5 hours. Yes, of course, the car is a crossover slash SUV. It actually stands on the same platform as the Volvo XC40. In comparison, the Volvo is 4.4 meters long and this car is 4.5 meters long. Yes, you do get these very awesome alloy wheels as standard. As you can see, there are some blue accents in it. And what is a very cool visual effect that if you drive with a higher speed, it looks like your alloy wheels are blue instead of, well, mostly gray. But is it also big enough to store all the luggage of your family? Well, with the seats up, the boot is 466 liters big. And if you put the rear seats down, it is 1213 liters big. Then what about the back seats? Well, the seat in front of me is in my typical driving position. I am 1 meter and 85 centimeters. And as you can see, I have loads of knee and leg room. I also have a little bit of headroom left, even though there is this nice panoramic roof. There is a little hump here in the floor, but the car is quite wide. So sitting here with three people is doable, I think. Besides that, the quality of the materials and the build quality is really good. Other features, well, there is a flap here on the seat in front of me. There are a USB-A and a USB-C charging port separate air vents, a very big armrest and a nice detail about this car is that all seats in this car are made from recycled fishing nets and other plastics. Then what about the interior here in the front? Well, I can be sure about that because the build quality and the quality of the materials are very good. It is nothing less than a Volvo XC40. To be honest, I actually prefer this interior but also the exterior over the Volvo XC40. Just the way it is designed is more my cup of tea. In front of the driver there's a digital instrument cluster and here in the center console are physical buttons for the most important features like your climate control, changing the volume or mute your media. You have probably already seen it but for the infotainment system there's a huge display here in the middle and I gotta say this infotainment system is one of the best infotainment systems I have experienced so far. The graphics are clean, it is easy to use, it is responsive, it's, it is very well done. In the infotainment system though are some cool slash fun features. For example, you can change the theme of the infotainment system. Doing this will also change the look of the instrument cluster in front of the driver. There is the so-called journey cam. So there's a camera facing inwards and a camera facing outwards. And with the journey cam you can record or take pictures of certain parts of your journey. 
Then there is an inbox. So apparently you can receive messages from Link and Co. Or maybe from other community members. I, I really don't know, to be honest. If you have a suggestion for Link and Co. Or maybe an improvement that they can do, you can just leave a voice message here in the infotainment system and it will be uploaded to Link and Co. And there are games in the infotainment system. No, they're not games like The Witcher, like in a Tesla, but they are games that you can play with your passenger and games that are safe to do while driving. For example, uh, it is a game where you have to guess um, a certain amount of countries in the continent of Africa and then whoever lasts the longest wins. Is everything perfect then? Nah, of course not. For example, I cannot pull the steering wheel anymore towards me but I have the feeling the steering wheel was just a bit too far away for me to get my most comfortable driving position. Then second, the voice of the digital assistant and the navigation software. It is just weird. It sounds like they have electronically altered someone's voice. And I'm sorry if you did the voice recordings for this and this is your actual voice. Again, I'm sorry, but it sounds just a bit weird. And then third, there is no DAB Plus radio in this car. I mean, that is a standard feature on the most cheap car out there, but not in a car that costs 40,000 euros. It's a bit weird. After testing only electric cars, I had to get used to the plug-in hybrid drivetrain. And that is because this drivetrain first drains the battery. So it tries to drive on the electric motor as much as possible until there are a few percent left in the battery and then it switches to a hybrid mode. But if you drive electric and you want to make use of the 261 horsepower, the electric motor cannot deliver that, so the engine has to help. But you are driving electric and the engine is turned off. So you are flooring the accelerator pedal. First, the engine has to start, then the gearbox has to shift, the engine has to make some revs. So with you flooring the accelerator pedal and you getting the 261 horsepower, there is a one to two second delay. When you are driving normally, this is not an issue. And also when the battery is almost empty, this is not an issue because while well, you're already driving on the engine, but if you are driving electric and you suddenly want to take, overtake someone, this is something to keep in mind. Besides that, the suspension of the car is on the firm side. You definitely feel a lot more what is going on on the road than in the Volvo XC40. And well, you have to like that. The steering though has a nice weight to it. And also the car is nice and quiet, which makes this a really nice car to travel in. What could get a little bit more refinement though is the braking, because while braking you can feel the engine being turned off and also being decoupled. Driving and safety features, well, being in the same group as Volvo, you do expect that they can use the same systems. And I think they did, because all driving and safety features that you can wish for are equipped on this car. So, after watching this video, are you ready to join the Lincoln Co. community and share your car with others? Yes? No? Nonetheless, I think this is a very good car. And if I compare it to the Volvo XC40 with the same drivetrain, at least here in the Netherlands, it will cost you at least 7,000 euros more. Given the fact that the interior is nothing less and the opinion that it looks better, I know which car I would choose. But keep in mind, if you do share your car with others and you do it a lot, you have the potential to drive your Lincoln Co. for free. So that was the Lincoln Co. 01. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please give a like and do subscribe. If you do not want to miss a video in the future, ring that bell. Did you not like it? Please leave a comment below to see what I can improve. And then I would like to say now thank you a lot for watching. And as always, till we continued.